was born in China, a small city in China, uh, 40 years ago. And it was a small city that m many people wouldn't know of. However, it is famous for its noodles, for its beef noodles. So very often we can see beef noodle restaurants in, on the streets in Melbourne or even on, uh, in some other cities in all over the world. I came to Australia in 2007 as an international student. And uh, I was enrolled into the Mel University of Melbourne uh, to study in telecommunications engineering. And that was to pursue a master's degree after I graduated from a Chinese university back then. So I will describe a little bit of about the object that I brought here today. It's actually a little um, fluffy toy. It's all filled with scented herbs. So if you put it close, you can smell. It, it's been many years, so the smell is not as strong. However, it was supposed to be uh, worn like next to the clothes or you know as a, a accessories to your bags to provide this a uh, good scent. And it was given by my grandma. And as you can see, it was supposed to be shaped as a little gray mouse. However, my little son actually just ripped off the the um, the whiskers and also the a, a little bit of the ear above, above here and you cannot really see the legs uh, if we get close we can maybe we can see the shape of the legs um, and there is a little tie red tie here and the, the purpose is to actually hang up this little um, small um, small charm here the charm is uh, for blessing uh, on one side it says about uh, you know wish me, especially me, uh, to live long and be wealthy. And the other side means to be safe and peaceful. So my grandma actually gave this little subject to me when she was still alive. Um, and because that, that was given as a gift when I left my hometown. So, and after so many years, I still, I have, uh, I have been keeping it until today, until my my little son, you know, kind of destroyed the shape a little. However, I'm, it's still at home with me. I have a very close relationship with my grandma. It's a custom of uh, in the entire Chinese culture, and it can be shaped differently. Sometimes it can be a little bag. Sometimes it can be an animal shaped. And this is actually um, uh, my, because uh, you know there are twelve animals in Chinese culture, and each year there is an animal. And I was born in the year of the rat. So that's why my grandma actually made it in this shape. However, this is a quite common uh, custom in the entire Chinese culture. It can be given in, uh, to anyone in modern China, but not in the past. Because in ancient Chinese culture, normally women will actually handmade those type of things and give to the male that they fall in love with. But today, it just um, you know we lost that type, the layer of the meaning, and it can be given to anyone by anyone. Just a good wish. Um, you came here as a student. Then what happened with your life settling into Australia? In the beginning, it was very tough because um, in my generation, most people were um, the only child in the family, including myself. So I didn't have sibling supports and most of my friends or classmates were still in, back, uh, in China and it was all by myself and it was quite difficult to settle down especially um, the first hurdle that you know I had to jump over was to finding a place to live because the, because of the imbalance of the information and it was so difficult to get on the Australian website back then you know, from China, you cannot access certain or many of the foreign um, websites. So it's very hard to actually have got a secure uh, information source to find a good place to live. So in the beginning, I had to borrow a place from one of my old classmates. Because he uh, went back into China for two weeks, and I can temporarily live in that place for two weeks before he returns. So I had to find a new place by myself in that two weeks period. It was pretty tough. And especially, you know, it doesn't, many of the streets, the names of the streets or the suburbs, they 
they don't mean anything. It's just a name. And it makes my life very hard if I, you know, had to search on the map. Because in the past, like uh, 17 years ago, we Google Maps or, you know, such uh, online tools were not very popular. So mainly I have to resort to Mailway, if you can still remember the thick type of the, the map book, and turn it page by page to find it ex exactly the street. So it was very tough. Because I'm sure that the University of Melbourne or even most universities, they offer good student services like help people to find accommodations and also some other, you know, life support. However, because I didn't know, I wasn't even aware, so I didn't use any of that. And then I fall into this circle of find, uh, submit job applications and then got rejected. <laughs> So, and that process was also very painful and uh, I didn't realize it was such a, uh, you know, painful process because back in China, because when I graduated my bachelor's degree in China, I easily got job offers like many of them because of because I was in a, quite a good university and like my academic reports was, you know, was quite decent. So I, I easily got the job offer. Um, in China before I came to Australia. So I didn't expect this to happen at all. And especially because I think about I have, I did uh, attain like two master's degree in Australia and I had got a part-time job experience all the time. I didn't know it was so hard to really uh, land on a professional job back then. However, um, I, I, will, I have been lucky that I got my permanent residency relatively easy compared to what is looking now. So the idea was to, uh, to explore what Australia looks like, um, even on a student visa, because I was intending to, to get a master's degree anyway. It's just a choice of which country. And I was thinking if Australia is a good place to live because I wasn't sure. I have not never visited Australia before. And then potentially I was thinking if I wanted to live in this country and at least its immigration system would support me compared to America or some European countries, you know, it's quite difficult to live permanently in those type of countries. If I reflect back many years ago, 17 years ago, I wasn't quite sure this was the, quite, the right move for me because I got good job, job offers in China and I, if I wanted to do master's degrees, I could of course also do that in China. So, and the coming to Australia was expensive, was very expensive. So I wasn't sure if it was a right choice, but now I felt very lucky that this somehow, I, I wouldn't say it's a choice made by me, but somehow, you know, lots of happenings in my life actually pushed me in, onto this path. And I was very, um, I, I think I was very lucky. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's just something that uh, it's a gift. I live in Wallet, so not quite far away from Tomstown. I engaged the builders to build that house in 2009, actually. Um, and uh, back then, that place was all farmland and with lots of cows. Yes. <laughs> but now it's uh, so quickly developed that uh, people wouldn't even imagine what it looked like before. So after so many years of living in Australia, um, and with many years not visiting back, I thought that, you know, China may become a very distant place. And uh, this trip um, that I just made recently with my two of my children and also my dad, um, it's mainly to let my kids to, uh, to experience the Chinese culture in an immers immersive way. So my two children, they are aged at 11 and 5. And, uh, that was the purpose of the trip. However, the, at the moment that I actually looked down from the airplane and saw the familiar land of my hometown, because my hometown, like I mentioned before, it wasn't a very famous city, and it has got this unique uh, landscape that it's dry and this very unique yellow and orangish color. And then I just started to feel that this, this is where my root is. 
So that was the moment, actually, that's all. even though I spent actually most of my life in Australia compared to, you know, in my homeland. But as soon as my eye catches the land underneath the airplane, I suddenly found that feeling back. And this is how the land, you know, how I grew up, you know, uh, as part of this whole country. And whole, it's not just about the land, and it's also about the culture. So it was mixed feelings coming up. So that was the moment that I think, I thought China is already quite distant from me. I have got a, no obvious connection. However, at that moment, I know I was wrong. We still speak Mandarin in, at Sorry. home, especially my, my older son, because my younger one is still, he is just five years old, maybe still too small. But with my older son, he has been attending Chinese schools all the time in the past few years. And is your partner Chinese Australian as well? He is interesting. He is a Malaysian Australian, or he's a Malaysian Chinese Australian. <laughs> you know, there are some um, Malaysian, uh, Malaysian Chinese, and then now he is in Australia, so it's kind of been very interesting. So we shared a part of the, we share some of our cultures, um, but not quite the same. So it's also a very interesting culture mix. I just feel like that because um, people need to be open to how different cultures have been mixing together. And very often, uh, like Chinese people, tend to be considered as rude, for example, because this is not quite the case. They did not want to be rude. It's just how the social contract you know, uh, look like back in China. They're just getting used to how this is how people should interact with each other and this is how people maintain their personal space and which is absolutely different from what we are experiencing in Western cultures. So if people are actually open and do like just calm down and listen and then I suppose it's better uh, to work or you know just to interact with people from different cultural backgrounds.